I would love a scientific and neurological, you know, more neurological study of, of, of religion and the way it affects people, or say religious music. I was talking with a neurobiologist in California about music and how it affects the brain. And he, he said he was going to give this music to a Jewish, a Christian, and a Muslim um, graduate student. And I immediately said, there won't be any difference in the way they respond. He said, I know. <laughs> because it's not about conceptual You mean structures. the way they respond neurologically? Right. No so difference. So it's, it's deeper than that, I think. And it's prior to that conceptual What's the, structure. It, what's deeper than that? Well, I think the response to certain uh, intuitions about meaning. Some of you know that Olivier Messiaen was a French musician. He was in the French army in 1940, captured by the Germans. And he was in a German prison camp um, and wrote about, later, about how he looked out of this horrifying camp with the violence and incomprehensibility of, of, of that war, um, looked out and saw a rainbow. And, and he, he connected it with the rainbow in the book of Revelation with the angel standing with a face blazing like the sun with a rainbow over his head with one foot on the ocean and one foot in the sky. And the angel says, there shall be no more time. And Messian wrote this brilliant piece of music listening to the birds. You could hear the birds talking about how time stopped. And that piece, as, as you may know, was played in the German prison camp by prisoners played for prisoners in 1941 on a freezing January night. It's about a spiritual dimension that Messian intuited in that horrendous situation. The spirituality emerging in the worst traumas, in the midst of the worst traumas. Well, that's where one needs it most. In fact, many of the great religions have come through periods of or realizations about horrible traumas and suffering. May um, I say, well, Judaism comes out of a history of slavery. And the whole Passover, of course, is about that. The Christian movement comes out of Judaism, out of the violence of a brutal and unjust execution, and people trying to find significance in it. So that even when Viktor Frankl, who was a secular Jewish psychiatrist in Auschwitz, wanted to write about meaning in those kinds of deaths that he was seeing all around him, he talked about countless crucifixions, just as Marc Chagall did. Meaning, a very important word for this discussion. We're finding perhaps different sources of what are the basis of solid meaning. Why do we want meaning? Why does it matter? But it may not, it may not be conceptual. It may not be something you can put in language. That we cannot put in language. Well, some things can. But this language in which you, you articulate this kind of dimension of experience is, is not literal. It doesn't have to be taken literally to be taken seriously. And what you've just touched on there is one of the reasons that more and more scientists are now talking about intelligence and consciousness in animals who don't use verbal language. Right, I suppose. 